You know how, like, the joke with Risk, the board game, is that you sit down to play it, and it takes, like, eight hours to play with your friends? This is the video game equivalent of that. You can sit down to play a game by yourself, and 16 hours later, you know, you passed your first turn. So if you like that kind of thing, here you go, I guess. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're playing a game See. by Sega. Well, I mean, published by them at least. That is the most modern looking Sega logo that I think I have ever seen. This, of course, today is Empire Total War. Um, this is an epic turn based strategy empire building game where you have to control the colonies in the 18th century or, or Europe, the colonies or Europe. You have to engage in military battles, diplomacy, you have to engage in population control, you have to build cities and resources and, and all sorts of like really cool stuff. There's lots of negotiation options in this game and suffice to say that to learn this game can take a long time. I've been messing around this game, this game for a couple of days. Uh, not for very long, mind you, but I haven't even made it through the tutorial. So, I've actually been dreading playing this game because I know what an epic scale this game is. And truth be told, today we're going to be in the kiddie pool. We're going to uh, be playing around in the uh, very beginning campaign. And the reason is just because, I mean, I, I, as I said, I've been messing around with this game trying to see, like, can I learn it? But one thing I realized is that battles in this game can take, like, 20 or 30 minutes per battle. And it takes multiple battles to, like, pass a map. So I, I think even if I learned all the ins and outs of this game, it would be too epic of a game for us to really cover in a reasonable amount of time. And so I decided that what we're going to do today is we're just going to uh, take a look at this game. We're going to be exposed to it. And uh, I will show you a much bigger campaign before we quit, and we can just sort of take a look at it. Uh, but today, we're, we're basically going to be working through this road to independence, and I don't even know if we're going to make it through this, okay? Because I don't even know how long it's going to take to get through this. Um, but suffice to say, this is a big, epic, uh, very interesting uh, game and uh, I, I think this is the kind of game that were I to have gotten this when I was you know in like grade 7 or something when I had lots of time after school to play video games I could totally have seen myself getting sort of sucked into this um, so here's the opening montage showing you all the awesome battles you're gonna have um, this is kind of like um, an old school tactical war game where you have artillery, you have cavalry, you have riflemen. And here's kind of the opening battle. Uh, we're going to have some uh, colonists fighting uh, native braves. As you see, they're running at us with their tomahawks and mohawks. Very uh, uh, stereotypical. I don't know if it's accurate or just stereotypical. But anyway, here are your different military units. You can select units. You can arrange them into different formations. Um, hold on, let me zoom my uh, camera out here. Uh, there we go. You can arrange them into different formations, give them orders, and they move. You can make them run. Uh, you can also make them engage in melee attacks. This enemy is kind of like... Oh, he's just running away. I was going to say, it looks like he's trying to rout us. These guys are getting in close, so we're going to turn on melee mode. In fact, actually, you don't have to turn that on. You can leave it off. They'll just melee when guys get close. Uh, we can, by the way, uh, zoom up into the battles if you want to see, like things happening at like the ground level we can watch uh, dudes die one at a time oh that guy's like forget it we're out of here so basically in these battles um these battles are very tactical and you just sort of have to arrange your forces you have to decide who's going to hang back and f offer support fire who's going to kind of charge in can we, you know, force the enemy into sort of, maybe if you have a V formation, force them into, like, the center of the V, then you can collapse around them. Like, it's, it very much reminds me of, like, Game of Thrones-style, like, battle tactics. Like, uh, you know, you wouldn't see this necessarily in more modern fighting games. Uh, not fighting games, but, like, war games when you have, like, tanks and scud missiles and stuff. Like, like war changed a lot with the advancement of technology, and this is sort of like a much older school tactical feel to war so oh my god we're actually getting swarmed there um we're kind of getting swarmed on all directions you know what melee charge if they want us they're gonna have to take us mano a mano 
Um, the game is on easy, so I think I'm I'm not really that concerned about losing this fight. Um, oh, that, oh, that guy! Oh, he got killed! Come on, kill him, guys! There's like four guys. Just attack him! Attack him! They're doing nothing. Oh, he got stabbed right in the neck. Oh, yikes! All right, he went down. Uh, I actually, in all my sort of just examinations of this game, I actually have not really zoomed in on the battles much, so it's interesting to watch the guys actually die. Anyway, it was a decisive victory. We succeeded. Chief Cheese Cheese Peak. What the heck? That's his name? Cheese Peak lost 84 men, and I lost 19. Under the, uh, the tenacious leadership of Jay... The Battle of Jamestown, 1607, was won. You must lead the early settlers to establish Jamestown as a safe and prosperous settlement in this dangerous new world. From time to time, the British government will issue various missions to perform. As you complete these missions, the wealth and security of Jamestown will improve, and your influence throughout the whole of the new world will expand. All right, so we have to basically make Jamestown a successful uh, settlement. If we go in here, we can sort of recruit some some soldiers. I think we might have run out of money, actually. Go in here, we can build farms. So basically, so I, I'm doing this rather quickly, but here's a peasant farm. Uh, for things like this, you can select upgrades and they will build. So here is a construction site. You can select a small cotton plantation or tobacco plantation. So you can select different things. Um, you want a farm to feed your guys. I think eventually you can upgrade the harbor into a port, but the city has to be big enough. Um, so there's there's stuff about you know how big the city is, and that determines what you can kind of build in the region. You don't have direct control. It's not like sort of Sim City or Civilization where you can choose exactly what to build. Um, the cities and environment seem this to develop a bit more like a board game, where area, as cities get bigger, new options just kind of appear in the territory, um, and the citizens decide where those things go. Here's an army. You can split it up if you want, um, or you can merge the guys back together. doesn't make a difference. Um, you can move them around like this, and eventually we'll go and we'll get into battles. Um, if you click on a city or pretty much any object, you, you get a lot of information about like what that object is actually turn, doing. You get historical backgrounds, so like if you're interested in the history, you can go ahead and read all this stuff. I think this game, by the way, is really well done in the sense of they have like a lot of historical descriptions and stuff like that, which I find are interesting. And it is actually fairly intuitive. Like even if you're playing this for the first time, you're like, okay, what do I do? Oh, th there's an icon that's blinking here. When I hover over it, it says end turn. Like there's a lot of tool tips and stuff that help you figure out what's going on and what you need to do. Um, anyway, this is now giving us some information about uh, farmland. And look, it's, it's winter in the background. We've been rewarded by money. We're getting paid for successfully building farms and so on. Um, and we're being told that I think we can now build a harbor. So we'll build, we'll turn our harbor into a fishery to get even more food. And we'll go ahead here. We can invest in cotton or tobacco. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with cotton because being from the future, I know the harmful effects of tobacco. And I think that's pretty much it. I don't yes. think we can, yeah, so this is a tutorial level. You can't just sort of wander into uh, other territories willy-nilly, so we kind of have to wait. So we'll wait a turn or two. And bravo, you have succeeded, you have successfully completed this mission. I think our mission was just to build a fishery. Um, and now we have actually unlocked more of the map. Again, being the tutorial level, the map's kind of being unlocked in sequences, but here's the first real thing we get to do is attack the these Native Americans who the dared exist here before us, I guess. Territory. How dare they have a town or fort there? Let's let's teach them what we do to natives in England, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and attack. I guess they worship uh, husks of corn, the deer people. Now, this is kind of interesting. When you go to actually invade a city, you can siege it which basically means you just cut it off from outside reinforcements and resources. You can assault it. You can uh, break the siege, which basically means kind of like agree that you're not going to siege them anymore. You can also demand their surrender. So as I said, there's sort of political options in this uh, game, which are kind of interesting. The defending force refuses to comply with your demand for surrender. Well then, 
Um, I'm actually going to... Can I do nothing? I'm going to break the siege because I just realized I have more forces here that I want to bring into battle. I have these guys, and I want them to go up there. So there we go. We're gonna, we're, we are going to siege them, but we're going to siege them with the biggest force that they've ever seen. More white men than they can shake a pony at. Um, anyway, we'll end the turn. And now we'll go ahead and we'll actually siege them for real this time. Maybe they'll actually surrender this time because they'll see we have a much bigger force. So here are their forces. They have infantry. You can see their, their statistics too. Again, the tooltips in this game are actually like make it really easy to follow what's going on. Range, accuracy. So if you want to get into this game, um, you, you know, there's a lot of sort of statistics to learn. Anyway, let's demand their surrender. Surrender refused. All right. They know that we're bluffing because twice we've told them to surrender and they haven't done it. So we're just going to freaking assault them. We could continue with siege, but sieges are long and boring affairs where you just kind of like hang out outside a city and, and uh, kill time. Um, Always keep some now, in reserve once behind your you have entered battle, you have like a deployment phase. So you can sort of take your forces and you can choose like where you want to place them. Uh, and this is, again, they'll just sort of teleport around because this is the initial deployment. Um, it doesn't matter exactly where we deploy our forces at the moment. Actually, just going to try and, like, keep them together. All right, and then you can sort of end the, the deployment and the battle begins. The so there's the enemy forces. See what they're going to do. There's actually another group of forces. Let's send these two groups to attack those guys. And let's bring... Actually... We're gonna bring these guys over here, and we're gonna make them hustle. So, uh, so units can walk or run. Can I don't know if you guys can tell, but these guys are running. We're assigning some light cardio for their wartime endeavors. This battle. <laughs> oh, there you go. I was gonna say my guys are just standing there taking it. Uh, I'm gonna send these guys into melee range, and go. If you double click on a unit, double right click, they will run into battle. So we'll get to see a battle here soon where these guys are attacking. Meanwhile, what's going on over here? Those guys are trying to flank us or something. All my other guys are over here. Okay, how about you attack? You know what? In fact, actually, you guys attack that. Oh, those guys are kind of like, they want some? You know what? You run into battle too. What's going on over here? Oh, I think these guys are fleeing. <laughs> half of them are staying still, half are fleeing. Don't know what's happening. Hey, there's their village actually. Alright, they are fleeing. So when enemy forces kind of lose morale or lose enough forces, they basically just sort of flee. And when enemies have fled, you don't actually have to kill them. You can just sort of uh, let them, like, run away. Like, those guys, I think they're they're done. Combatant, losing ability, encouraged friendly units nearby. Okay, so they might actually come back into battle. One thing I find a little annoying about the battles in this is that you actually don't usually completely wipe out an enemy instead usually what happens is an enemy starts to retreat and i think for the most part they kind of retreat forever but i can't 100 percent tell if they sometimes decide to come back into battle like those guys are retreating there i don't 100 percent know if they're like totally out of the battle i think those guys are retreating these guys are brave man to still be interested in fighting after they've seen all their allies run away like what do they think they're going to win the war by themselves Seems like a definitive losing fight. Although, where are their reinforcements? Oh, there they are. Charge! Like, doesn't this feel very, like, Game of Thronesy? Like, it makes me feel like a battlefield tactician. It's like, aha, my one force kept you busy while the other force swarmed you from the side. We just start slaughtering you one by one. And I think we've basically won this battle at this stage. Oh, what's that say? Enemy general killed. Hey, we killed the enemy general. Oh, these guys still want to fight, though. So let's do it. Yeah, see, those were the guys that retreated. The guys that sort of ran down this hill over here. They kind of were like, you know what? Actually, we will fight. So that's kind of something that's a little annoying, where you go to, like, kill the enemy, and, like, they decide, you know what? I'm going to retreat, and they start running away, and then they're like, just kidding, I changed my mind. Okay, let's... <laughs> Instant retreat. They, as soon as they encountered our forces, they were like, oh, 
yeah, I remember why we retreated in the first place. Forget this! Can we just shoot at them? We, uh... Or turn melee off. There you go. Open fire! Anytime you want. They're just standing there. What are you doing? Open fire, man! Okay. Are there any enemies left? Oh, look, there's like another, en there's a whole other enemy force over there. Okay. Well, let's, let's do it. Now, what's interesting is the first time that I played these tutorial missions, these battles took way longer. Like, I was trying to, like, position my troops and stuff. I feel like I'm just doing the equivalent of, like, a move. It's like selecting all your forces and going, charge melee mode. But maybe in the next battle, we'll try and be more tactical about it. But I feel like this battle is going way faster than in all my previous runs where I was just trying the game out. And this is what I mean about these. Th the game is good. Um, I think it's like really interesting and I like that it's sort of civilization, but really sort of a simulation version of civilization. But it is slow, it does take time. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't think that it's sort of like, well, you shouldn't play it because it's slow. I just mean that uh, if you, uh, you know, just sort of like want to like sit down and play a, a quicker game. This is probably not your game. Um, and if you do want to sort of like really relish the battles and stuff, then this actually is your game. And there, we just we just beat the battle, victory, heroic victory. Let's see how many men died so that we could take this uh, native stronghold. So John Smith deployed five. That's me. Deployed 510 troops. Lost 54. And, uh, I can't pronounce that. Wahusunikok deployed 510 and lost 510. Yikes, no one survived. And they only, wait, they killed 30 of our guys. We lost 54. What happened to the other 24? There's 24 that died that the enemy didn't kill. What, did we kill them by mistake? We were so good at killing, we were killing our own guys. Um, anyway, we've, we've taken over the city. Now, once you've taken over a city, oh, here's our final mission. We have to attack uh, Shackamaxon, Pennsylvania. So we're somewhere in Pennsylvania. Uh, so we can get that. But once you've taken over a city, you actually have to leave a little bit of a garrison. If you do not, then the citizens, I think will rebel and stuff so there are rebellions you have to quell in this game so what we can do is let's take oops we're gonna take three units here uh we want these three Enemy those guys are gonna leave the base and those two guys can stay meanwhile let us go and recruit more guys so these guys have accuracy of 40 melee of eight melee defense of nine these guys have accuracy of 45. These guys are way better. Colonial militia versus just militia. Okay, we're going to build some colonial militias. All right, five turns of colonial militias. Let's do that. And now just time will pass on by. Okay, let's see what we got here. We got one more turn. All right, now we have our army. We it have a fresh batch of young, eager cadets. Increasing They're going to go over there like that. Should we recruit more? Can we? We'll reduce the um, recruiting soldiers, by the way, uh, takes resources. So I'm almost positive that the more soldiers you have, uh, the more resources uh, get used up in terms of... Um, like your your empire, you know, like your empire can only support so many troops and stuff So I know when you're playing the game for real just quickly rushing towards a giant army actually doesn't really do you any good Because you can sometimes end up paying so much for uh, To maintain that army that your empire kind of collapses so diplomacy and trade are important and oh my god Look at them all 2,000 of their troops Against 720 of mine. My guys have melee defense of 8, morale of 6, and melee attack of 10. These guys have a melee attack of 3. These and morale of 3. You know what? Even though there's there's a lot more of these guys, I think we can take them because I think we can cause a lot of them to retreat. So they refused our surrender. So we're gonna go for an assault and we're gonna see how see how this actually plays out. 
Think what thousands fell in vain, wasted with disease and anguish, not in glorious battle slain. The Ballad of Admiral Hosier's Ghost. Oh, ghosts are writing poems now. It's quite a feat, actually. Um, Alright, let's see what we got going on for this battle here. So here are our illustrious colonial forces. Right? I kind of feel like uh, I'm in Avatar right now, where I'm like pillaging the natives, and I like, just don't care, because I'm like the evil colonials. But here are the colonial militias. The enemy is who the hell knows where, so our deployment is fine. Um, oh, and there's the enemy over there. All right, that is a lot of natives. They seem to be rushing at us. We need to find a choke point to engage them at. So let's do this. You guys come like this and get a hustle on for that. You guys come like this and get a little hustle on. And you guys uh, come like this. Get a hustle on, I guess. I don't know. We'll see how this works. I feel like by the time I get in position, they're going to have attacked me because they are coming real quick and my guys are kind of slow. So, oh man, it, it does look like Game of Thrones, like uh, legions of horses and stuff and, and infantry are like sort of moving around the battlefield. I like that. Sort of like an old school battlefield simulator. Okay. They are coming this way, as it turns out. As it turns out, they are right there. Everyone, open fire. You know what? I, I set up this whole line over here because I thought they'd come this way, but they did not. So everyone kind of come over this way. And I, I guess we're just going to have to hold off waves and waves of them. Um, hopefully, let's kind of zoom in here. Hopefully this kind of works. Now, these land battles are only half the game. There's also sea battles. Hey, look, those guys are retreating already. Perfect. What I really need are, like, artillery and cavalry. If I had cavalry, I could, like, just mow these guys down. Go, go. All right, it's turning into a melee affair. But anyway, these land battles are only half of the battles. The other half are sea battles, which are actually, I, I like... They're cool, but they're actually even slower than this, if you can believe it. So, and, and you know, you may be looking at this being like, this is actually not that slow. And you're right, actually, so far things are going fairly well. Um, again, if you guys only could have seen what I did in my tutorial. In the tutorial, I think I chased down, uh, like before I started recording today, I chased down one of these groups, so there was only one guy left, and he was running away by himself, and I think I chased him with an army for like 10 minutes. Before I realize it, actually, you don't really need to chase him. You can just kind of let those guys go. Um, wow, we are we are making short work of this. I was kind of intimidated by the fact that there were so many natives, but I guess uh, technology. Oh, look! Did they come around behind us? They did. They did attack them. Wow, they even tried to flank us. They're using good tactics. It's just that my guys seem to. Oh, look! It's just they're all retreating. My guys are just way too powerful, as it turns out. Krauts in the open! That's what they shout in World War II. Well, these guys are not Krauts, they are Native Americans. Um, right. I think their little ambush actually worked. They got a handful of our guys. But we're all back in formation now. Everybody's feeling good about things. Except these guys. These guys are not in formation. Okay, so literally their whole army is retreating, except they have some reserve forces over here. So this is bowmen who are tired, encouraged, and their flanks are secure. Let's see these guys. Concerned, friends routing, let's just say. Winded, losing, couldn't see what that said. Friends routing, casualties sustained during battle. How are my guys doing? They are encouraged, these guys are encouraged, these guys are encouraged, these guys are encouraged. Winded slightly, it said. Winded slightly. So my guys are feeling good about things. They're a little tired. Today has been a long day for them. They're looking forward to like getting into their lazy boys later tonight. Just sort of relax and chillax and after a long day on the battlefield. Wow, those guys are like covering a lot of territory. Providing a lot of background. 
cover fire. All right, literally everyone has retreated. Everyone who is on the battle has retreated. Let's just go occupy their village. Because why not? Because we can. And let's select all these guys. Let's go over here. There we go. Sure, that looks good. When, when you're winning by such a large degree, I don't think it really matters where you assign your troops. Uh, we can so select everybody. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and tell everybody to run. There we go, and off they go. Everybody's everyone's getting a good cardio workout on on my watch. Oh look, the enemies are gathering here. They're gaining the confidence to come back into battle. They're just gonna run away again. Who are they fooling? Okay, let's select these guys. You know what, you guys want a melee fight? Let's do it. We'll give you a melee battle. We're not ones to uh, shy away from an honest bludgeoning. They might be retreating already. No, they're they're coming in for the fight. There you go. Whoever's the, whoever, like this is somebody's house in the village. Whoever's this house is just on the inside. Like, oh my god, Helen, don't go outside right now. There seems to be a mob of two factions bludgeoning each other to death with hatchets and swords. I'm gonna be in the kitchen, watching it all, just staring out his window, being like, oh my, oh god. Helen, lock the door. <laughs> well, the village extends all the way out over here. Look at this. Look at this village. What is this? There's like a little door over that one. Can we enter that village? Controlled by nobody. We could control the farmhouse. Wait, what? Can we control other things around here? Is there anything worth controlling? Seems like no. Okay, let's just attack those guys. Because if... if we don't attack these guys, I don't think. This level is ending. Go, go, go. We have, like, this epic music, and it's like... The battle has been decided for ever since it started. There's absolutely no way these guys are going to win. Oh, but they do want to fight. All right, I will give you a fight. See, these guys are retreating. Are they done? Also, this is their village they're supposedly defending. So if they run away from it, where are they going? They're just like running off to live in the wilderness now, I guess. I don't know. Uh, anyway, these guys are continuing to fight. More and more fighting is ensuing. Ooh, it's kind of a slow game, as I say. And like, this is a basic fight. This is a tutorial level. I think when you get more units, it would be a more interesting battle because there's not much tactics you can do when you pretty much only have like uh you know two kinds of units good militia and not as good militia um, here we go like these guys okay everyone is in full-on retreat is this a victory yet is this a victory yet oh there seems to be some confusion with whether you are losing this battle or not so <laughs> as soon as i went to attack them they went to retreat Okay, is there anyone else left? Anyone? Everyone's in retreat. We won! Yay! So I guess you get them into retreat mode, and after like 10 seconds, it gives you the victory. All right, we broke their spirit, men. Good job! So we lost 132 men, and again, they killed 77, but we lost 132. So like 60 dudes were killed by our own guys, but we mercilessly slaughtered them. They lost 2,100 soldiers, or almost 2,200. That's all they deployed, but, like, what did we just butcher them after they surrendered? Did we not take prisoners in this game? You successfully completed this mission. Have well-deserved rewards. May your inspired leadership endure, and may you enjoy success as your people's greatness. Thanks for your efforts, the Jamestown settlement has prospered. No longer reliant on food from England, the settlers can start amassing wealth and expanding Britain's colonies in America. This is great news for Britain. What could ever go wrong? Oh, yeah, the American Revolution. <laughs> that whole thing where the American colonies declared independence and then later on became more powerful than England ever, ever could. Yeah, that whole thing. But until then, it's good times for England, right? Good times indeed. Oh, well, England will always have Canada. We're technically independent, but 
We're we're very close friends. We're like countries with benefits. Of in the Ohio anyway, Valley. so here we have our first look at diplomacy. A mission has been issued. It is the general consensus that the task stipulated here should be achieved. Okay. You have been tasked to form an alliance with the local Iroquois tribe. The skill and knowledge of their warriors will be of great benefit in the war against the French. Uh, instigate negotiations by clicking on your diplomacy button. All right, so the Iroquois, they are at war with France and the Huron Wyandots. So let's go ahead and talk to them and see what we can do. Um, it is good to talk with our friends, the great warriors such as you. Let us bargain then as friends. Okay. So there's lots of di diplomatic uh, options, as I say. Again, I think this is what would have been really neat to have in Civilization 2. I know the later Civilizations had more di uh, diplomatic actions or options, but I like the fact that there are diplomacy and trade things you can figure out in this game. So let's see if we can... Uh, well, let's just propose an alliance. Let's cut right to the chase. Your offer, your demands. Let's see what they say. Uh, congratulations. Oh, man. They are... <laughs> that was easy. Uh, you successfully completed your mission. Now that you have negotiated an alliance with the Iroquois, you will be able to recruit native warriors to bolster your armies. Oh, that's cool. So now we can recruit native warriors. I'm pretty sure that, uh, in, like, later on, uh, you know, you could talk to them. Uh, oh, our business is concluded. You could talk to them and you could, like, offer them uh, alliances, but then also offer them, like, trade agreements and, like, presents and, like, all sorts of stuff to sort of, like, sweeten the deal. So, anyway. Um, all right, negotiations completed. We are... We are masters of diplomacy intact. Basically, we contacted another group and said, hey, you want to be allies? And they were like, yo, it's on. And we were like, success. We are geniuses. Is this Jamestown? What is happening? This looks exactly like the map we were just on, but all the names are very different. So I don't know what's happening. Anyway, let's upgrade this to a peasant farm. Let's upgrade this to a cotton plantation. This is the same map, but all the names of the towns are different. It's very odd. Um, let's go ahead and merge the these guys together. What you I would like to orders. do is engage in some naval battles, but uh, I don't know if I don't know if that's in the mix or not. Ready? Anyway, we'll go ahead and end our turn and let's see what happens. The basis of all agriculture. Oh, that the description of a farm. Um, these guys are our allies. So if you go into their army tab, you can recruit them. You can basically, uh, or can you? Okay, no, you, you can't control their armies, but maybe we can like recruit them under the recruitment tab. Yeah, they're an option. So the tribesmen are willing to fight for European gold and a musket a piece. So if we want, we can recruit them. They seem like not a good unit though. These guys I think seem better, melee attack. Well, they might be good as, like, cannon fodder. I guess let's build some. Build a couple of these guys. And some of these skirmishers. Why not? Now this panel is used for negotiations between nations. Available diplomatic options are listed on the left. Oh, okay. My people wish to bargain. Their demands a trade agreement. They are going... See, look at this. They're offering us more than, than they're demanding. So this is what I think you'd actually have to do if you wanted to ally with someone, is you'd have to grant them military access and give them money and stuff. That sounds like a like an awesome deal to me. Um, how about we counter offer and we ask for money payments to or and let's an ask for, for uh, to to pay repeatedly uh, how about 50 gold and click on the for five turns let's see if they'll do some installment play, uh, payment payments before putting forward um, oh I actually wiped out the payment they were gonna give me uh, okay whatever let's see if they'll do it uh, Kerms could be better uh, they agreed to it. I think we just, <laughs> I think we countered off ourselves into less money, but whatever. Anyway, as you can see, now you can, like, move through their yes, nation. Lord. So before, we weren't allowed to, like, move through their nation because they're, like, a sovereign, uh, land. But if you, uh, you know, if you negotiate, you actually can. So there you go. So let's see if we can, uh, attack this fort. 
The Iroquois Confederacy. Anything more? Wait, we're allied with them. Wait, and th this is the Iroquois too. Where, where are we supposed to attack? Oh, there's a fort. The France Fort. All right, that's what we're going for. Units Let's uh, merge these guys, by the way. Oh, actually, it looks like that it's uh, army group is, like, full on. Hey, you can have agents and ships and stuff. That's pretty cool. Um, okay, I'm just going to send those guys over here for fun. And meanwhile, we are going to work our way over to France. And is there anything else to build here? There is a fishery or a shipyard. We're going for shipyard because we want to see some boats. Yes, sir. All right, off you go, marching through the dead of winter into the, oh. the battle of your lives, of your young lives, young men. There's forts and stuff, so you can occupy forts in order to defend regions. Anything more? Pretty cool tactical game. All right, sort of got like some brave art music in the background going on. We just built a shipyard, so now. We can build ships. Okay, a brig. Brig is a lightly armored, small, two-mast sailing ship. And a sloop is a sloop of war. I want some sloops. I want all the sloops you can build. I, I'm going to have, I'm going to launch the biggest naval expedition the world has ever seen. Meanwhile, my troops are going to launch the biggest ground expedition the world has ever seen. I'm really into uh, establishing uh, crazy new standards for war. Let's see if they'll surrender. Surrender refused. I wonder if that ever works. Let's just attack them. I mean, we're here to see the battle. Um, I have lived as a philosopher and die as a Christian. Giam Casanova. Venetian clergyman. Oh yeah, that's another thing. In this game, you actually have to manage religions. There are different religions in different regions, and uh, I think there's a way to interact with that, if I'm not mistaken. We will look at a big overall campaign uh, shortly. Um, all right, here is our deployment. Oh, look at that. There's like a river and stuff. That's awesome. A fort or settlement. Um, all right, Many so th see, now we have more tactics going on because we have like uh, cannons and stuff. And we have, oh, we have uh, guys on horses. I should have deployed, I should have actually strategically deployed guys. Um, oh, look, they're firing cannons at us. Those jerks. So we're going to fire back. And let's see. All of our troops are going to go forward. Can I make, like, hot groups? I think so. Um, these guys going to be group two there we go yes you can number your groups group two will go like that these guys be group three and these guys would be group five there we go all right three and five and you know what i'm just gonna send them all in let's let's see what happens Let's see what happens. Oh, and this guy. These guys are reinforcements. The British colonists. They're eager, but they, they're too inexperienced. They just have to, like, hang back here. Watch everyone else. Everyone's just marching through this river. It's a very slow-going invasion. There's a bridge over here that we could have potentially taken. A warehouse. Probably could have taken that. Man, their troops are so spread out. This will be, like... I feel like this is like a 40 minute battle. Where are my guys? You know, Alright, our first battle. Charge! Charge! Oh, it's cavalry on cavalry, man. Attack. Uh, heroic death. Uh-oh, I think, uh... I think my leader has died. <laughs> that did not take long. Um, are these guys going to do anything? Look, they're all going so slow. Oh, there's like a big old traffic jam. Uh-oh. I think my strategy of just haplessly marching into battle was only semi-successful. So we lost our leader, I think. Or they lost theirs. I'm not entirely sure exactly the logistics of who lost whom. Uh, we'll go like this now. They can't stop us all. This is like... Uh, Remember back when everyone wanted to like raid Area 51 on Reddit and they like set a date to do that? This is this is that plan come to fruition. It's just a bunch of people all just marching in, being like, "We don't have a plan. We're highly disorganized. Just whatever happens, happens." 
And people are moving so slow. Get in there! The odd cannon is being hurled over the river. Um, are these guys on our side? Yes, they are, too. You guys get over there, too. Why is everyone taking so long? Get over there! You get going! Look, everyone's just standing there. Go! Go! There's like epic music playing, but like a lot of guys are just literally standing still. I can't get them to go. They've like lost the will to live. Okay, I've ordered all my forces to march up this hill. This could take a while. Oh my god, they have forces all the way over here. Or wait, are those our guys? Those are our guys! How did our guys get all the way over there? I guess I could have like surrounded them and attacked from like different angles. Instead of just like rushing in all willy-nilly. Aha! Caught you off guard! Cannons! What are these guys doing? Get up there! Go! I like the horses because they're fast and they actually get places where I tell them to go. Uh, that's cool that like more and more troops are like flooding out of their uh, little fort here. And here's their fort. It is very basic. Just a big open courtyard. I guess this is what forts were like. We can capture their house if we want. It's this nice looking house. My troops are slowly making it up here. There we go, a battle is actually ensuing. The guys are actually shooting at enemies. And they are fleeing. I just have too many good forces, man. My army's too massive. Once we get up to that fort, everything is over. Mark my words. I think there is a way, by the way, to automatically have the computer deal with these battles. So if you're more interested in like the tactics and stuff. Oh wait, fast forward. There we go. I was gonna say there must be a way to like speed this up. All right, everybody, we're gonna play this game on fast forward moving forward. Everyone attack. Everyone get into that house. Everyone ladder your way up the walls. Are there enemy forces we could be attacking? Yes, there are. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks way, that's way more satisfying to watch them like run into battle like that. Um, and I think our guys are making ladders and killing enemies. There we go. Yeah, look, They're, like storming the walls. That's cool. They look like ants. They're moving so fast. No more that I can tell. I still have units streaming in. Welcome to the battle, pals. Finally. We're capturing the house. Um, and I think that means we win, right? Do we win? We've definitely got the fort. So in another 45 minutes, the battle will be over according to this <laughs> I think we can like go and attack all the units. Oh, no, we won We won. I was gonna say what 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 do we do now? We captured the fort um, Victory we captured the fort victory is ours I'm actually glad we found that fast-forward button because that battle was taking forever I think we totally lost one of our heroes one of our noble heroes Siege, died in battle and the remaining French forces retreat um, I think, let me just see real quick. I, I kind of want to get in one more, like, big land war and, uh, see what happens. Because I'm pretty sure you can just sort of, like, have the computer sort of, uh, you know, run everything. So here, we're going to abandon this fort. Where did that Ready French group go? We're going to go ahead to this city right here, their capital city. They're going to besiege it. We'll demand their surrender. They refused. Auto resolve assault. Um, there we go. Um, oh, the computer lost half of our forces, but we won. I think that is a far better way to deal with. Uh, oh wait, did we lose that fight? We lost the fight. Oh man, the computer sucks. So the nice thing about having the computer auto-resolve the battles is, of course, uh, the battles go far quicker. The downside is you can probably command your forces far more 
efficiently than the computer. Or maybe you can't, actually. I mean, like, I think the computer probably would, uh, probably would, uh, command my forces better than me. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyway, we seem to have been expelled back to our home territory Majesty. because we ran out of the, uh... The negotiations. We're allies with the the Iroquois, but they do not want us to move our forces into their land. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, anyway, you know what? This has all, all been a charade because what we're really doing here is building the largest naval fleet the world has ever seen. Dockyard. Yes, we want a dockyard. Of course we do. What are you foolish? Um, let's have our dockyard be completed. Two more rounds. One other interesting thing is, uh, so you do have to care about the population. I haven't really been paying them much mind, but they are sensitive to things like if you are at war and you're winning lots of battles, the population gets happier and supports the war. But if the opposite is happening, they get more unhappy and they want the war to end. So there's some interesting stuff going on here with, uh, you know, having to like maintain your population and your actual empire, which is kind of cool. Um, oh, look, we can build a new type of ship. The fifth rate. Frigates are single deck warships used for a variety of tasks. All right, build some of those too. Why not? You know, we're going to wait for a couple of years here. Okay. Look at this awesome naval force. Ships cannot go there. Right click to move Boom. Your feet to any part of the highlighted area. All right, now we can go anywhere we want. Right on land to in the highlighted area. Are you kidding me? I built this massive fleet and this is the extent of the sea that we can roam, this small peninsula. I feel like an idiot. <laughs> what what a waste. What a waste. Can I disembark at least? Can't do that, sir. All right, well, you know what? We saw the tutorial. We saw the tutorial. Uh, I want to go in here and show you guys how big this game can actually get. So the grand campaign. Uh, you can play as different countries. Uh, so you can kind of pick your favorites. Um, I guess since we were playing as England, we should mix it up a bit. Uh, but I kind of like England. We're gonna, you know, we'll, you know, actually, no, we'll, we'll be French. We were, we were fighting against the French. Now we're going to be French. And the Grand Campaign is kind of like a giant game of Axis and Allies. Again, only with like the diplomacy and strategy and depth of civilization and more. Your first priority should be to bolster your armies through recruitment in order to adequately patrol France's extensive borders. The Alsace region to the east could be under threat. The inhabitants are largely German speakers, so Prussia or Austria may try to take it back in an attempt to forge a single German empire. However, a protracted land war with either of these nations may prove unwise. I like how they give you a little breakdown before you go into this, so you kind of know what to expect. The territories of the Holy Roman Empire to the east are good Catholic populations under the corrupt yoke of heretic Lutheran masters. As such, the territories of Rhineland and Württemberg are potential targets for a Catholic French army wishing to bring the true religion back to the faithful. Also, look to expand your foothold in the new worlds of America and India. Quebec, Montreal. Colonize both continents, therefore becoming too powerful to keep in check. There are still unexplored native territories on the American continent, although the Spanish have begun expansion in that direction. So time is of the essence. In India, the landscape is changing. The India too! Empire is starting to collapse and lose territory to their Maratha rivals. The British, Dutch and Portuguese are all active in this theater. So you should make alliances and secure territory before they do. Make trade agreements in order to sell your colonial resources. Open as many trade routes as possible between France and her colonies. And patrol routes against attack as much as possible. An alliance with Spain may also be fruitful, acting as a counterbalance to the current British monopoly in America. And there you have it. This is basically the Game of Thrones for the entire world. Now, 
since I have not even fully made it through the tutorials, I don't even know where to begin with this. You know, like there's so many options, like should you build a barracks or a cannon foundry or construction site? Should you engage in politics? You know, should you look at your various armies? Should you be building more armies? Um, you know, should you be researching new technologies? It's, it's literally overwhelming. There's also, for, for example, to see these lines on the ocean. These are trade routes. And if you park one of your ships on an enemy's trade route, you can actually pirate their trade route. And if you go into the uh, next theater, so you can play, I mean, you have to keep an eye on India. Also at the same time in North America, you know, Quebec, Montreal, uh, they don't have Toronto, which is sad for me. But it goes all the way down to Florida, and look, you have Cuba. I think that I saw like a pirate ship down here when they when uh, we were like sailing around. Yeah, there's a pirate ship. Look at this, nasty pirates. Charles Fleury, trade ship used to create trade, um, but he's a pirate. A uh, very cool game, very huge scope, and as I say, like it's like it's almost overwhelming for me. As I said, I was dragging my feet for a long time about playing this game, and I felt like I had to get you know, competent in it so I could actually play with you guys. But I started to realize it was never going to happen because, like, this game is like a novel. It is like six novels. It is like you have to sit, you like, you have to really commit yourself to this game in order to learn all of its intricacies. And I think I, I have to admit that it's just well beyond me. It's huge compared to the other games that we normally play on this channel. But uh, in terms of just sort of getting exposed to the idea of it, uh, I think this is uh, really interesting. And look, when you click on a territory, you can see all the countries that it has negative relations with and all those it has good relations with. You can find the enemy of your enemy, an ally with them. They have different attitudes. You can, I think there's even minor nations that you can like ally with and communicate with. This game is literally a tactician or politician's dream game, I think. So if you're into tactics, battles, negotiations, all that stuff, this game, I've never seen anything like it. I think it is amazing and interesting. Um, and I wish that I literally had the time to get into this, but uh, maybe when I retire. When, I, when I'm retired and I can commit to this uh, 40 hours a week playing Empires, I can finally figure it out. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I just wanted to show this to you guys today, and uh, as promised, let's take a look at a ship battle. Oh man, between turns, you have to, like, watch every single other power move their forces. <laughs> this is actually incredibly slow. Oh man. Oh god, okay, forget it. We'll look at the ship tutorial battle, how about that? Oh, actually, you can just play individual battles, so that's nice. So if you want to scrape all the politics away. Sure, go ahead. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Initiate the combat. For here, I leave my second leg. What? Is the naval um, alright. So here are our ships. Duels between ships. And... Oh, I think there's... I think it's two on two. On I think right some of the computers are on our side, or... Not 100% now. So these guys... How close friendly. Friendly numbers nearby. So I'm not entirely sure who's on my side and who isn't, but we're just gonna attack. Uh, literally everyone. Uh, if you thought land battles were slow, man, look at this. This is on fast forward. My computer can barely handle this. Um, I think we, it's just we have a thout, we have way too many ships and too much uh, water effects going on. But maybe we should like turn the graphics down. Image quality low. All right, back into battle. Fast forward. Oh god, it did nothing. Low quality graphics did nothing. Anyway, the ships just all kind of sail around and fire at each other. Um, you know what? Hold on. A decisive defeat for me. That's okay. I like, by the way, when you select sea battles, you can have the Battle of Trafalgar. Or you can have the Battle of the Caribbean. It just changes the color of the water. There's absolutely no difference. Or the Mediterranean Sea. The Bay of Biscay. Like, there's literally... It's just slightly changed water. All right, we're only going to have one ship... And the CPU is only going to have one ship. Mano a e mano. All right, we ha now have a ship. The the arrow, a guy is still giving us uh, advice. 
We now have a ship, and off we go to battle. Alright, so when you have the ships, um, you can actually manually steer them left and right if you want. And you can kind of see the areas where they can, like, uh, shoot their cannonballs. You can also... Oh my god, this guy in the background will not stop talking. Shut up! Um, anyway, uh, yeah, there's different kinds of uh, shots you have. There's, like, the standard cannonballs... There's the chain shot, which, take, which takes down the enemy mass. There's the grape shot, which is not shooting a bunch of grapes. It's, it's sort of like shrapnel to try and take out the crew. And you can also, like, charge up your side so that you have, like, uh... I don't know what they call it. Basically, just fire all the guns at once. So the one thing that's actually different about the sea battle is, uh, as I say, is you can, like, manually steer your ship. So we can, like, try and steer... To one side. Oh, they're just peppering us. They're much better at this than we are. And if my guy will rotate. Oh, you can like see the rotation. Interesting. They rotate that way. And once they are in line, we are going to open fire with everything that we've got. Line this up perfectly. Kaboom! We might have sort of missed. Oh, look at all those cannons. Most of them missed. All right, and then. Off you go to continue the fight. Um, I like, you know, the sea battles in this game actually remind me of an old DOS game called The Ancient Art of War at Sea. Uh, because you did have to sort of manually steer your ships and worry about uh, whether you had firing opportunities and so on. Um, also, uh, this reminds me of Sid Meier's Pirates. The newer one for the Xbox 360, I think, or the original Xbox. Either way... That is a pirate game that I, like, really enjoy, Sid Meier's Pirates. So, I think the ship combat in this game is not bad. In fact, I think all the combat in this game is honestly not that bad. The thing is, it's just very slow and meticulous. So, if you are the kind of person who really enjoys simulations, who enjoys, you know, really methodical, careful military engagements... I definitely see the appeal to this. This is sort of like the Microsoft Flight Simulators of real-time strategy games. But I think a lot of this more generic real-time strategy games... Oh, God, season. shut up. <laughs> I think about a lot of more generic real-time strategy games... Uh, you know, things like StarCraft and Command and & Conquer, you know, when I say generic, um, they have sort of streamlined things to get away from the simulation to make things faster. So I think that's kind of just what I'm more used to. Uh, not to say one is better than the other, but I personally think the more streamlined games are more my kind of game. This this felt a little slow to me today. Uh, anyway, Empire Total War is one of the games of the book of thousands of video games you must play before you die. Um, I think it is actually a really cool game, um, and it reminds me of like really intricate board games like Axis and Allies or the Game of Thrones board game. I like the politics and the strategy and the complexity to the empires and stuff, and it does feel more like a board game than some other tactical games. Like, like Civilization feels like a far more simplified version of this, actually. And I kind of like what they went for here. Um, I do think this is only going to appeal to a very certain select kind of people because it is such an undertaking. Like, you have to really commit to this game. You have to really sort of get involved in it and it is slow so it's not the kind of game you can pick up and really make much progress in in you know 15 20 minutes you gotta like sit down for like four hours five hours and play this so um is it a game you must play before you die um i think again if you're the right kind of person it is a must uh but for many of us we simply lack the amount of time so those are my thoughts what do you guys think of empire total war here is it a game that you've played before is it a game you have cool tips for fond memories let me know in the comments down below, and uh, regardless of what you thought of today's game, hopefully I made today kind of interesting. I know we just sort of splashed around in the kiddie pool tutorial for this game, but, uh, you know, really, again, given the scope of this game, I, I just knew I wouldn't be able to do the whole game. So hopefully you guys at least learned a little something. You got an exposure to what this game was, was like. Uh, how did we lose that? What? <laughs> My ship just sat side by side doing nothing for like a long time and then we just lose. Anyway, I guess whatever you think of today's game, I hope you learned a little something and you can now make a more informed decision about whether you actually want to give this one a try. Um, and that's it. So until next time, my friends, I hope you all take care of yourselves and uh, I'm just going to be here lost in the Atlantic waiting for help. 
And uh, yeah, so take care of yourselves and peace. We opened fire! Man, we're actually rocking them. Here comes the mega shot from the mega cannon. Get in range. Get in range. Kaboom! Fire! Oh man, <laughs> the mega cannon sucks.